Canter police arrested Saints star receiver Chris Olave last night for speeding, and today they released the body camera video of it. Uh, Olave put other drivers' lives in danger by maneuvering between lanes and in between cars at a high speed. She probably wasn't happy that he was being arrested, but um, he was very cooperative. My apologies if we got this video to you guys a little late. Between the NBA season starting and what has been going on in the NFL, we've had our hands full here. But before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. Now that we got all that out of the way, work. check one two one two what's going on everybody the new orleans saints have had a very interesting past two years as they've been trying to carve an identity following the sean payton era and at the very minimum you have to admit that this is a team that has been doing very well when it's come to the nfl draft now i will admit i didn't necessarily agree with the fact that they decided to make a huge trade with the philadelphia eagles that bolstered the eagles draft position in the 2023 nfl draft but for what it's worth in the 2022 NFL draft, they struck gold with the 11th overall pick, selecting Chris Olave out of Ohio State University, one pick after Garrett Wilson was selected. I mean, this is very rare. You rarely see this ever happen, but literally in back-to-back -back picks, you saw Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, two teammates at Ohio State University who are being thrown to by CJ Stroud, go in the NFL draft. And for the most part, both of them lived up to their billing. Now, Garrett Wilson had a significantly more prolific prolific rookie season than Chris Olave and would end up winning rookie of the year as a result of that. I'm guessing the reason why he got rookie of the year is because he had less stability at the quarterback position than Chris Olave because these two had very similar numbers to one another. I mean, Garrett Wilson had an 83 reception season for over 1100 yards receiving and four touchdowns and Chris Olave had a 72 reception season for 1042 receiving yards and four touchdowns. Needless to say, Chris Olave would finish four fourth in Offensive Rookie of the Year voting. I'm guessing since Garrett Wilson started in more games, but regardless, wouldn't it be more impressive since Chris Olave was able to make up that same output in less games? I don't necessarily know. Maybe since they viewed Garrett Wilson in having a significant handicap over Chris Olave due to bad quarterback play, that's why he got Rookie of the Year. Or maybe they just wanted to say the Jets had the Offensive and Defensive Rookie of the Year. Regardless, there's no denying Chris Olave has a very bright future in the NFL. And in year two, he was looking to to really take the next step in the NFL, considering the fact that he got a decent upgrade at the quarterback position. Now, if you're a Las Vegas Raider fan, you're gonna see some parallels here. This past off season, the New Orleans Saints signed Derek Carr to a contract, which when you compare his contract to other major contracts in the NFL, it really isn't that bad. He was signed to a four year, $150 million contract. So a little bit under $40 million a year annually. He's not even a top 10 paid QB at this point. So it's a bargain for what is supposed to be an upgrade at the QB position for a bridge quarterback, which is fantastic for Derek Carr and fantastic for the New Orleans Saints. What's interesting is two years ago, Derek Carr played in the greatest season of his career for the Las Vegas Raiders, throwing for over 4,800 passing yards, completing 68% of his passes and for 23 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. He did this in a year where John Gruden resigned abruptly as head coach for the Las Vegas Raiders. Damon Arnett did whatever the hell this was. And more famously, Henry Ruggs made a horrific mistake by going to Top Golf, getting drunk out of his mind, getting behind a Corvette, and driving recklessly to the point of crashing into a woman by the name of Tina Tinter and ending her life. The impact of the crash was so traumatic that Tina Tinter would get stuck in her car and incinerated to death with her dog. Truly a tragedy. We've covered it multiple times on this channel. Henry Ruggs is currently in prison as a result of that, and hopefully it's a lifelong lesson that everyone learned from. Two years later, Derek Carr's wide receiver one seemed to have gotten himself into a similar position. Now, this isn't exactly the same situation. It does involve reckless driving. It's not nearly as reckless driving, but his top wide receiver did get arrested for this. So according to Catherine Terrell of ESPN, New Orleans Saints wide receiver Chris Olave was arrested Monday night in Kenner, Louisiana on suspicion of reckless operation of a motor vehicle. So if you happen to be a Derek Carr fan, Derek Carr fans exist, this may seem a little familiar to you. Police said Olave was driving 
driving 70 miles per hour in a 35 miles per hour zone on Joe Yenny Boulevard, which was described in a Kenner Police Department release as a mixed business slash residential area. Dodge Charger driven by Olave was observed driving at the high rate of speed, recklessly maneuvering between lanes and around other drivers on the roadway. The Saints said that they were aware of the situation but had no comment. Now, Olave was booked into Kenner Jail Monday night and was released at 11.30 p.m. Saints did not practice Monday after they were given the weekend off following Thursday night's game last week. However, the Saints still held meetings and players were required to come to the facility in Kenner on Monday afternoon. What's interesting about this is we actually have footage of the incident taking place. And from what we understand, Chris Olave was sober and he fully cooperated with the police. There's nothing bad in that regard. But the footage here is pretty comical. Watch. So, I need you to stand right over here by my car. I don't know, man. The fact that he just name dropped the fact that he played for the New Orleans Saints and the officer was like, okay, so what? To me, I just thought that was a little funny. Now, obviously, there's a huge difference between here and Henry Ruggs. You can't really compare the two, honestly. One involved an accident, one didn't. One involved the loss of life, one didn't. One was driving under the influence. And in this case, Chris Olave didn't drive under the influence. Thank God. A lot of people are really sensitive about speeding currently as a result of what happened with Henry Ruggs. So this is what Chris Olave had to say in response to the arrest footage, making it online. They couldn't wait to try to tear me down and bash me. Damn crazy world. I don't really like where he's going with this personally. You went 35 miles per hour over the speed limit. You were cutting people off. A cop caught you. And as a result, you got arrested and you're going to pay a ticket and this is all going to go away. And honestly, it was all deserved. I don't think there's anything more to it. It didn't seem like the police officer was doing anything else except arresting Chris Olave and saying, yo, you were speeding and him suspecting that he was recklessly off operating a motor vehicle. One of my favorite new laws is the fact that policemen are obligated to wear body cams so we could see if any foul play was going down. And in this case, we saw for ourselves, no foul play went down. I hope he learns from this situation, man, because again, I cover way too many DUI instances on this channel. Thankfully, this isn't one of them. The last situation we covered that was very similar to this had to do with Jordan Addison, who just had a remarkable Monday night performance against the San Francisco 49ers. Imagine if he was robbed of that. Imagine if we were robbed of that as a result of him making poor choices off of the football field. At the end of the day, I'm very empathetic. Again, Chris Olave, 23 years old, doing really well in the NFL. Hopefully he learns from this mistake. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. And I'm sure he's going to be good to play on Sunday for those of you guys that have him in fantasy. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all this, man. If you're a Saints fan, are you concerned about Chris Olave? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.